What's up guys, Philip Collin, Pack Pythons, not in the snake pit. Today we are in Q2, quarantine two. Uh, this is not primary quarantine, this is secondary quarantine. This is where the NIDO positive animals are residing. Uh, I literally just finished this video and I had shot the whole thing with the camera facing the wall behind you instead of facing me. <laughs> I got a new uh, camera rig. Uh, hopefully the quality is a little better. Hopefully you guys uh, can enjoy that. I've also decided to stop doing the pacing around with the camera to myself like vlogger style. I'm too fidgety for that and I just pace all over the place. I can't sit still and do something with the camera. It's not, it's not good for me, I guess. So we're going to do this from now on. This seems fine. I'm comfortable with it. So, uh, jumping right in. What does nidovirus look like? Uh, spoiler, it looks just like every other ball python. It's terrifying. Um, if the animal is asymptomatic and not showing clinical signs, it literally does not look any different. But, nonetheless, we're going to pull out one of these animals, take a look at it, and you guys can kind of get a feel for... The fact that these animals effectively look perfectly healthy. If you did a normal quarantine process with these, you would think nothing of them and throw them right in your collection. And that's kind of scary. So hopefully we can share some, shed some light on this and uh, get you guys thinking. I don't want you guys to be afraid of nidovirus, but I want you to be aware of it and I want you to be cautious and informed. So let's learn together and we'll, we'll hopefully... Uh, do something good with all of this. To start with, before we show the animal, I sent off 20 samples. 10 of those samples went to RAL. 10 of those samples went to Fish Head Labs. Those were all taken from the same 10 animals. And the idea was that if the animals were in a shed cycle, Let's say when we did our original test of the whole collection uh, a few weeks ago, let's say some of the animals were in shed cycle, tested positive, and let's say some of them were not in shed cycle, right? Then we take 10 more samples and we just send them straight to fish head. We don't bother with RAL. We do that a couple weeks later. Well, let's say some of the animals were now back in shed cycle, and let's say some of them were off of their shed cycle. Well, then we could get all kinds of mixed results uh, that would say that animals that tested negative before are positive now, and animals that tested positive before are negative now. Both of those would be very confusing and misleading. Uh, it would make potentially make REL look like their results are mis uh, were incorrect or whatever, uh, like they had done, done something wrong. But the concept is if we sent off the samples together then they would all the animals that were tested would be where they are for both samples to both places so the results should all be the same fortunately because the samples were lost for three days and floated around ral uh samples got lost in the post i'm not sure if i just said that or not uh again i'm recording this a second time it's kind of confusing to record the same thing twice <laughs> I can't remember what I said just now or what I said before. Anyways, uh, they got lost for three days. By the time they showed up at REL, the samples were no good. And we did not get a viable sample from any of the, those uh, swabs. So now we just got to hope that the 10 that go to fish head, which we should have results for in a couple days, uh, will give us the same results that we had originally, which would show that these three were positive the other seven were negative. Uh, so, fingers crossed we don't get any misleading or confusing information. Uh, the other thing that, well, we're going to do an update on those samples when we get them back in a couple of days. I think I just said that. Uh, the other thing I want to cover is this setup. This setup is not perfect. It was thrown together kind of hastily because of the situation. We need to get animals away from other animals as quickly as possible. We had a first quarantine 
and we needed a second quarantine ASAP. So uh, this got kind of thrown together. It works well for typical husbandry. It will not work for what I plan to do in testing. And we'll get into that after we take a look at the one animal that we're gonna pull out and check out. So let's jump into that again. When we talk about the enclosures, I'm gonna want some of your input. So please stick around to the end. We'll talk about what I plan to do with the enclosure and you guys can hopefully help me figure out what's best for what I'm trying to accomplish. So let's jump in and check out this animal. We are gonna pull out this beautiful female. Normal, well, I say normal, she is a uh, het candy and I would say inchy as well. Very pretty girl. She has tested positive for nidovirus. So as you can see, uh, nice body weight, uh, tongue flick and uh, responding, everything physically acting perfectly normal. If we would open her mouth, which we did the other day, you would see that it is clean and clear, nice and pink to white as it should be, perfectly normal. She's got nice clean belly scales and her vent is clear she's passing waste as she should like normal and drinking and eating as she should so what's wrong with her she is carrying nidovirus ball python nidovirus one and that is a contagious virus that if I didn't know any better and if I hadn't tested her, she would be mixed in with all the other hatchlings that I have in the racks and just handling the snake like I am, the virus is, if she's shedding the virus, this is potentially going into my hands and into the sweat on my palms and when I go and handle another animal immediately after this, I'm going to end up transferring that virus to the next animal. So, it's a scary thing. Now, in a lot of cases, when this animal is put under stress, and uh, let's say the temperatures drop, or let's say you would get this animal up to size and start breeding it, or let's say you change the environment or the humidity's low or high, any sort of stressor, uh, not being comfortable in its environment, but in an, in an environment that it's not totally safe or feels totally safe and secure, and you would end up uh, causing stress, which would potentially weaken the immune system and cause other clinical signs to start showing up. The clinical signs range greatly, but uh, one of the major signs is going to be respiratory infection. Another is going to be uh, diarrhea. That's something I experienced, or loose stool. Uh, anorexia, not eating. Loss of body weight. Uh, lethargic. All of these things can be signs of something going on. And any of those would be something you need to get addressed by your veterinarian as soon as possible. So. <clears throat> now, if you don't know what a respiratory infection looks like or what diarrhea or what normal stool looks like, you know, uh, it's stuff you can look up elsewhere, I guess. I'm gonna go ahead and pick her up now, wash my hands, and then we'll continue the conversation. Okay, so she's a pretty snake, and obviously Nido's a sneaky, sneaky thing. We gotta keep our eyes peeled and make sure we're informed so that we can protect ourselves and our animals. Um, 
jumping back to this enclosure. This enclosure was thrown together in about 45 minutes. <laughs> it's rough and dirty, but it gets the job done. It is, uh, it's got a heating element on a thermostat. The back is fully enclosed. The front is open for airflow. Um, this space is part of my house, so it is air conditioned. And I have the vents closed when the AC is on, and I have the vents open when the AC is off and the heater's on. But the temperature lately outside has been flip-flopping, so that setting and the vent has been changing constantly. It's difficult to manage. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, this setup has, you know, your standard temperature gradient. So you got warm at the back, cooler at the front, between about 79 and 89 degrees. The issue with that for testing is that the, the tests I plan to do require me to have a, a, an exact temperature, no temperature gradient throughout the entire environment for that animal. I do not want to give the animal the opportunity to adjust its own body temperature. And the reason for that is we want to create a small amount of stress and we want to make sure that all three animals are at the exact same temperature. So ideally, uh, like let's say 75 degrees, we have the environment set up to where every animal, all three are at 75 degrees and we leave it like that for three days or five days or one day. We'll, we'll potentially do multiple rounds of testing with different numbers of days at different temperatures. And that's going to allow us to see over a period of time what the viral load does in each animal under that specific temperature and specific stress. Um, these animals, fortunately, are all about the same size and about the same age, so they're perfect as a sample against each other. Um, the issue is, again, can't do a perfect temperature setup with this enclosure, so my thought is create something like an incubator. So it would be, uh, I'm picturing a PVC box or box with two by four framing, PVC lined interior and sealed with some small ventilation and for fresh air. And then a ventilation or a circulation fan in there circulating the air, heating element on a thermostat, and then shelving inside with animals in their own locked lock lid tub and that tub would have some ventilation on it. And the ventilation on the tub potentially would have like, let's say we take a piece of uh, cloth mask, like a medical mask and cut out a piece of it to cover the ventilation holes to allow fresh air, but not allow any kind of uh, physical airborne liquids or anything like that to come out into the uh, incubator. Uh, it's not obviously not an incubator. There's no eggs going in this, but you get the gist of it. It would have a closed door. I don't know if it's necessarily sealed, but again, not a lot of airflow going in and out, just enough for fresh air. And that would allow us to set the entire environment to a specific temperature and maintain that perfectly, you know, throughout the entire space. Uh, I think that's the route we're going to go. If you guys have any other ideas of how we could do that, the problem with that setup is that uh, that works for the tests, but that does not work for uh, normal husbandry. So there's no way that I can think of to set an animal up in that environment and give it a, a temperature gradient to live normally. Uh, so outside of testing, the animal would have to basically be moved out of there and back into here. Uh, we could potentially use the same tubs so that the animal is not having to move into a completely new environment over and over, but it would be shuffled around a little bit. Um, I don't want the stress of the animal being moved back and forth to contribute some factor that we can't measure, whereas we could have it, it would be ideal to have an animal permanently in one place and then just being able to fluctuate back and forth between temperature gradient and no temperature gradient for testing, so ugh, it's complicated. If you guys have any input, I would greatly appreciate it. 
hit up the comments down below. Uh, again, if you guys uh, haven't checked out our merch store, all of the revenue from our merch sale on Teespring goes 100% to this testing. We also have a PayPal account down in the description if you guys want to donate directly to the research. We really hope to fine-tune the testing process and get really uh, accurate negative results and really accurate, well, positives are positives, but it would reduce the time it takes to, to tell if an animal is positive or not. And if we could accomplish that, it could really change the game of how uh, you quarantine animals initially and being able to test only once or maybe twice to be certain if an animal has night or not. That's the goal. Stick around. Stay tuned for more of that. <sighs> we'll do an update again, like I said, as soon as we get the results back from, RA, uh, from Fish Head. And hopefully those results don't cause more confusion. <laughs> we'll see. <clears throat> Much appreciation. You guys are awesome. I will see you later. Y'all take it easy. If it ain't easy, don't take it. Peace.